Hello, boys and girls. It's great to have you with us, and I'm speaking to you now, and I want to begin our little time together with a picture. Now, I want you to be thinking, who are these people? Have any idea who they are, and then we'll come back to it in just a moment. So here is the picture. You see these two individuals? Yes. You'll see that certainly notice this is, uh, see they're dressed in uniforms, yeah. Um, you see this one here in particular has a massive head, very huge head. And this person here seems very pleased and, and genuinely happy. Yes, this person, this one is certainly somewhat suspicious looking and seems to take the person taking the photograph uh, to be somewhat suspect. So there's the picture. Let's have a look there, yeah. Now, We'll come back to the picture, like I said. But as we've been looking in the Lord Jesus's model prayer, how he gives us how we can pray and how we ought to pray, here's his model. We come now to this part, which is where Jesus tells us that as we pray, we pray to our Father, we pray to God, and we are to pray this. And here is the point. And for Forgive us, we're praying to God to forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. So let's take the first part. Why do we pray to God to forgive us our debts? Well, debts here refers to our sins, that which we've done that is against God. When we have sinned against and we've done that which is wrong, which is, as I say, against God. So when we sin, here described as debt, we, we know that when we pray to God, we pray and say to him and ask him to forgive us our debts. And we pray knowing for each of us who are Christians, each of us who trust in Jesus, that because of his cross, when we pray and ask for our sins to be forgiven, we also then know that they have been forgiven, that God in Christ Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, he bore the penalty for our sins. For each one of us, for each one of you boys and girls who trust in Jesus, your sins have been forgiven. That is, Jesus has paid the price for them. He suffered in your place so that all your sins have been thus forgiven. Isn't that amazing? So that's why when we pray we, and we pray and ask God for forgiveness, we know that in Christ, because of what he did on the cross, because he's risen again, our sins have been paid for. They've been forgiven. That's a wonderful thing that should should bring us to great confidence when we pray to God. But secondly, <clears throat> knowing that we've been forgiven and thus we can pray for, for, for forgiveness and know we have been forgiven of our sins, that which we've done that's wrong against God. In the next point in, in this verse says that as we also have forgiven our debtors. So those who have sinned against us, those who do us wrong, the, the way a Christian responds to that is as we have been forgiven, as God has shown his great mercy to us and compassion, so we show compassion and mercy to those who wrong us. And we have forgiven uh, our debtors, and, and that's what we are to do, to forgive our debtors, those who wrong us. What does that look like, boys and girls? Well, that looks like not holding a grudge against them. In other words, treating them as if they haven't wronged us. That's what it means to forgive. To forgive in our hearts is to not hold on to the wrong that the person did when they took something from us, when they said something nasty to us. Whatever they've done, and the point of forgiveness is because we've been forgiven. Now, we don't become God, but we respond as he has forgiven us, as he has not dealt with us according to what we deserved. So we, when people wrong us, we can treat them as if they haven't wronged us. We can, as uh, my mother used to say, keep short accounts. So for each one of us, boys and girls, for you who trust in, in Jesus, we pray and can know that we've 
been forgiven of our sins against God. And because of that, when our friends, when our brothers and sisters wrong us, we are called to forgive. This is the response of those who have been themselves forgiven of their sins for all eternity in the Lord Jesus, that we are to forgive those who wrong us. That is, that we don't count their wrong against them. Indeed, we treat them as if they have not done us wrong. And that is our joy to do because we've been forgiven. So back to the picture, the astute among you will see, there we are again, and you probably already know, let me see if I can get that a bit clearer, get out of the way, that this person here is my brother. And we look similar, of course, because we are twins. So this is Tim. See how happy he looks, how genuine. And then this person with the uh, abnormally large head is, is me. You can see that whilst I have a bit of a smirk, um, I am look a little suspicious, which maybe won't surprise some of you. Why do I show this? Well, because, boys and girls, when we, we talk about forgiveness, those of us who have brothers and sisters, we have lots of opportunity to forgive, don't we? When we do wrong, when we have wrong done to us, my brother, Tim, as you saw there, he, he has had to and, and has forgiven me for, for lots of things that I have done wrong to him and, and the other way around. And he's a Christian and he's my brother both in the flesh because he's my brother, but he's my brother in Christ as well. And we both have wronged and said wrong things to one another and done wrong, wrong things to one another. But we have always been taught by the Lord Jesus and thankfully by my faithful parents that our call, our joy as Christians is to forgive because we've been forgiven. We can't erase the, the, the action. We can't remove it from history. That isn't our place. We can't forgive someone's sins eternally because we're not God. But we can from our side forgive. That is from, it's our, what we can do in our hearts. We cannot hold the grudge of the wrong done against us. We can treat the person as if they've not done us wrong. And in that way, we fulfill what it, the call of, of the Lord Jesus and that which we uh, pray when we ask God for forgiveness and know we're forgiven, we then show forgiveness and we forgive, show compassion and mercy to those who have wronged us. Well, thank you for listening, boys and girls, and thank you for uh, being with me. And now what we're going to do is carry on with our service. And next up, we have a few things. We have a song the music group are, are going to do for us, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. We're then going to see a mission video for, uh, and about the nation of France, our near neighbor, and a place of, of much spiritual darkness, yes, but we're going to hear about the church. We're going to be praying for many to come to faith in Jesus and the church to be encouraged and built up and thank the Lord for the work he is doing currently in the nation and among the nation of France. Then we're going to hear the text for the sermon that will be read for us by Peter. And lastly, we're going to sing, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer.